and we're back with Kerbal Space Program. Now, last time we had a little bit of a rough encounter, a little bit of tough love with the forces of aerodynamics, but this time hopefully we'll be able to solve that. And before we jump in, we're gonna again look at uh, what we can unlock here. And what I got my eyes on is probably this node where we're gonna unlock some RCS capabilities. So th th this will just uh, uh, give us some thrusters so we can actually turn our ship around pretty effectively in space. Because right now it's a little bit of a slog uh, to turn our ship around. So we'll unlock this first. Of course, we don't have enough science to progress any further, but uh, this will already give us a reaction wheel, which give us the, uh, gives us the ability to uh, to control our ship uh, a lot better as well. So with those improvements, let's jump in. Now, last time we had some issues and I gave it some thought. And uh, of course, the, the question of lift is not something we got to concern our ourselves with here because we don't we're not dealing with a plane so we, we don't have to worry about lift but we do have to worry about the positioning of our winglets and i was right in the sense that we don't want any winglets in in the middle of our body because that's gonna as i was uh, thinking that's gonna cause um the f the force to to just tilt our, our ship around and we don't want that to happen so I was right in positioning them uh, as far down as possible but uh, w turns out what I was missing here is just m more winglets we didn't have enough winglets and when we tried to maneuver a rocket we didn't have enough surfaces uh, to keep us stable and that was just causing us to spin out of control Everything else was working here, and uh, actually, maybe I don't even need these ex exterior winglets, but we'll keep them for good measure. So I'm pretty confident that this design will work quite a bit better and will allow us to perform a gravity turn quite nicely. I just want to touch a couple things here, uh, namely, I want more science because uh, these canisters can only be used once, and then they're they're unusable so you know might as well pack two of those guys like that we already got two of the uh, goo canister uh, thingies uh, might as well pack some extra solar panels since we have the surface to work with so yeah we're gonna roll four more panels uh what is this air brakes interesting okay. don't need that uh yes our inline reaction wheel let's pack this bad boy again this will allow us to turn our ship oh it's pretty small <laughs> okay so let's just put it in between our um our probe capsule and the rest of our ship i think this this is how it's, this is where it's supposed to be placed and this should be a way better design uh, in terms of fuel we got plenty and also I should have mentioned the goal for today is well as you may imagine we're gonna launch one of another one of these bad boys but this time actually well instead of having one in Kerbal orbit um, my plan is to well still keep it in Kerbin orbit but I want it to be as far away as possible so I want basically something quite far away that gives me just extra range in terms of communications and uh, yeah so let's go so we're gonna have a similar first uh, first set of steps here but hopefully this time we're gonna have a stable launch so here's hoping let's go three two one go all right so we know that the first stage is very stable we're just hoping that uh, with the extra winglets we'll be able to maneuver this thing so we're gonna be ready to go to the next stage here when these uh, rockets run out okay yes I can feel that it's way more stable let's just try to move away from the velocity vector see how it behaves 
Whoa. Okay. So we did improve our stability a lot. But it, it's, we, we got to just be a little bit more gentle than that. <laughs> uh, if, I, if I had been uh, gentler in that turn, it would have been completely fine. But I just turned like too fast and got a little bit out of control there. That's fine. So we're just going to maintain 45 degrees here as we discussed prior and we're just going to wait for the 70 kilometer spot. So yeah, I'm pretty happy uh, about this launch despite my my uh, uh, my bad control there, but that's just a bad piloting thing that won't happen again. So after this launch, we'll be able to send probes out without the fear of uh, them going out of range and we've reached 70 kilometers so let's just wait a little bit until we reach that April apps and yeah I'm pretty excited about this so the next thing we'll do is send a probe to the moon and we'll try to land that thing Okay, let's just burn here. And you can see just by being a little bit more, well, by not spinning out of control like we did last time, we've saved quite a bit of fuel and we still have fuel in this stage. Whereas uh, in the previous attempt, we actually ran out of fuel super quick. And stage, all right. So we're just waiting for our circular orbit here. Again, I'm just going to wait a little bit until we reach APO apps. All right. And we should be fine. So yeah, I'm a little bit mad that I didn't realize the flaws with our design but this is already a, a pretty decent uh, rocket design that I'm happy with um, again the only issues we had were due to my bad piloting and not necessarily uh, to do with the actual rocket so we've got 1000 meters per second left of Delta V that should be enough to get us quite far we're gonna extend our antenna and extend our other antennas can see we got our fancy lights in there and we're ready to go so what's the next step we get into a large orbit and I think my idea is kind of being in this radius just outside of Minmus so what we do here is well ideally we want to perform our because we actually didn't get a circular orbit so our apoapsis is quite different than our peri so we'll just create a maneuver here at periapsis and we can actually input a value here so let's just say we're gonna dump like 900 whoa okay that's too much how about something like this okay I gotta keep in mind though that we don't want an encounter and the other thing is we need to have some amount of fuel to extend our uh, our periapsis all the way and make it hopefully a circular orbit so we're gonna try this we'll have l around like 200 um, Delta V left and I'm just kind of hoping that it's gonna be enough might be a little tight but uh, let's give that a shot. So we're gonna just warp all the way here. All right. Uh, also wanted to apologize. The previous video, the uh, there's a little bit of issue with the video quality. The rendering. Well, I'm using a new program. Uh, to edit videos and there was a little issue with the rendering that I'm still trying to work out 
And yeah, some of it, it's a little bit out of focus. It's not great, but you know, it's a learning process. I'm pretty new to the whole video editing thing. Hopefully we'll figure that out soon. But we're approaching our maneuver node here. So just speed things up a little bit. We're pointing ourselves in the direction and we're ready to burn. So our burn is uh, like a 20 something seconds. And we gotta be mindful of our fuel here because we, we're pretty, we're a little bit short on fuel because while our ascent was not very good and we wasted quite a bit of fuel there, but that's fine. All right, so let's cut that. I actually overdid it a little. We have very little fuel left, but we'll be okay. Let's just warp ourselves to a collapse. And now all we gotta do is just burn prograde and we'll extend our periaps, hopefully all the way outside the, the radius of Minmus orbit. Let's just make sure we're pointing the right way. And we're gonna probably dump the rest of our fuel. S Whoa, okay. Oh, I didn't realize we actually screwed up. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm so dumb. I was thinking this was Minmus. <laughs> That's actually just the moon. Wow, okay. Well, this changes things. <laughs> That's fine. So what we do here is we just go to <laughs> our new APO apps. Oh, we cannot maneuver there? What? Hmm. So that's tricky. We're actually going to collide with the moon? <laughs> okay. So... Perhaps... Okay, so we're here. All we'll do is assume, understand that we failed our maneuver and hopefully... I'm just thinking we have so limited fuel that maybe our best shot is just to go again to our periaps We'll burn like a bit of our fuel looking pro grade. Wow, okay. <laughs> so I see some issues here. <laughs> Mainly that right now we're gonna collide with the moon. Which is, you know, undesirable. Okay, let's try to adjust our trajectory a little bit by burning radial here. And radial is a direction we haven't seen before. So what happens when you burn radial is that your, your, um, your orbit moves, think of it as moving sideways. So your inclination remains the same and the, uh, kind of the uh, magnitude of your orbit or the size of your orbit should remain the same but you're just kind of translating your orbit sideways. So let's just burn gently here in this direction. Okay, so that's already enough for us to. That's already enough for us to dodge the moon. Now we're, we find ourselves in a predicament because we do not have enough fuel to circularize our orbit. And what's going to happen is that we're going <laughs> to get away from the Kerbin sphere of influence. 
and into the suns. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta go with it and, you know, make the best out of a bad situation. So we, we made mistakes, we wasted a lot of fuel, we thought this was Minmus when it was positively not Minmus. And, you know, I think what we'll make of this is that we're just gonna have a solar satellite. How about that? So let's just go with the flow here and yeah so we warp ourselves here we're gonna go into the sphere of influence of the man where is the man there's the man of course we're no stranger to the moon Jebediah himself was there not long ago and we're just gonna warp past the moon goodbye Saying goodbye to home. This probe is going places. So now the next step is for us to just keep going. It's going to take us four days to get there. But at this point we're going to actually exit Kerbin orbit. And we're going to have our first... Uh, well, our first probe be sent outside of Kerbin orbit. Which is, you know, it's a big deal. Let's just uh, speed things up a little bit here until we actually... Whoa. Okay. So there it is. We got our first probe in solar orbit. Look at the ridiculousness of our APO apps. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to kind of be content with this. We're going to save the very little amount of fuel we have left. And for now, we'll take some science at this point. Because we've never been this far out in space. Uh, the goo feels right at home here. 20 science. Of course, we only are able to transmit a little portion of it. We'll transmit it anyways. We'll just make sure we got enough electric charge here. Uh, what we'll do actually is try to point our spacecraft towards the sun so we're grabbing that juicy solar power I can see that filling up slowly but steadily we'll grab some materials based science the high radiation environment caused a few of the samples to glow okay we already saw that message let's just send the science over again we gotta be careful not to run out of power here okay we might want to just speed up time a little bit so that we get that solar power let's just again try to get the best angle here on our panels speed things up a little bit and possibly turn off the lights as well so there we go that should be enough for us to transmit so we go barometer data send that done and thermometer boom so we got some science. We can still, of course, send more science because we packed another science module there. Um, and I think we'll just wait until we're in a different region here. So maybe we could just warp, but we don't have to. We can just wait until we get to a different point. So yeah, we got our first probe out there in the solar system. Um, uh, yeah, I think we're kind of done here. So let's name it. And of course, as we did last time, we're going to name it after an awesome physicist. Uh, this time it's K. 
skip Thorn's turn. So we go Thorn, Relay. And of course, Kip Thorn is perhaps the biggest authority in terms of uh, relativity theory living nowadays. Uh, he actually was the consultant for the Interstellar movie. So all the science you see in Interstellar, he oversaw. And honestly, it's pretty awesome. So, okay. L at this point, let's just go back to our space center. Let's see how much science we were able to grab from that. Okay, 125 science, not bad. Positively not bad. And now actually, if we go to our tracking station, we should be able to see our two probes. So let's take a look here. So we got our Tyson relay right there. And of course, our Thorn relay we just popped. We can't see it because we can't go further than this, I don't think. Or can we? Oh, we can. Okay, there it is. So, you know, this... Do I think this satellite will be super useful? I don't know. We'll, at the very least, we'll get some science from it. And, you know, it might assist as a relay in case we're visiting other planets and it happens to be in an acceptable range. So... You know, perhaps just a small step in our in our space program, but a step nonetheless. What are we doing next? Well, I think it's time. I think it's time we think about landing in the moon. Or if not landing, at least exploring the moon. We have... Whoa, my game just completely crapped itself. All right, we're back. So we do have a mission that consists of basically exploring different spots on the moon so we'll just fly over these spots and it actually pays very well which is not something I'm concerned with too much but it might be just good practice and I'm thinking it might be a good opportunity to also enhance our astronaut complex this will allow us to perform EVAs so we can send out an astronaut and he can actually spacewalk around the moon this time, which is going to be exciting. So I think that's what's in the books for us next time. And of course, we'll bring Jebediah along. He's our go-to pilot here. And yeah, I think that's, that's what we're going to do. But until then, of course, I've been Johnny and I'll see you next time.